decades ago, a Russian scientist called Viktor Grabenikov made some astonishing discoveries. But strangely enough, science academia never really brought into them. And sadly, they have faded into our lost history. Welcome back to Damaged by Design. So Viktor Grabenikov discovered the cavity structural effect by surprise in the spring of 1983. He says that when he moved his palm over multiple cavernous bee nests, he felt warmth originating from them. He began to investigate the phenomenon and discovered that the source of odd feelings such as warm breezes, chilly winds and tingling in his hands was not from heat or any kind of biofield. He claimed to have constructed a levitation platform that worked by attaching dead insect body parts together. Grabenikov documented his adventures of flying over the Russian countryside with his levitation apparatus in his books. These airborne encounters, as well as his other observations of other paranormal phenomena, typically involving insect nests or parts, are all documented in his self-published book that's called My World. He says that while using a microscope to inspect the lower surface of a beetle's wing case, he became intrigued by an unusually rhythmic, extremely ordered and incomparable honeycomb. He says that it looked like a solid multi-dimensional composition which looked as if it had been pressed by some kind of complicated machine. They say that Grabenikov was able to design a new type of aircraft called a gravity plane after studying this incredible micro pattern. And so Grabenikov discovered this bio anti-gravity effect in 1988 and subsequently examined it from various angles over the years he started developing platform designs and even conducting experiments of his own. He even filed a patent application for this and it was granted to him in 1993. The details say that the patent was granted on a device that's said to contain beehive cells and dry honeycomb. And finally, Grabenikov created his anti-gravity plane and began flying it off speeds and it said that it reached speeds of almost up to 1,000 miles per hour. It said that from below, the aircraft had no interior and was nearly invisible, and that people who witnessed it from the ground saw a bright sphere-shaped disc or a cloud with sharply defined edges that glowed as it traveled. Even more fantasizing, is that the orb that is described as surrounded this device this protected it from the elements while in motion meaning while you were in motion you wouldn't feel no wind resistance whatsoever also it said that this was a noiseless aircraft producing no sound whatsoever Grabenikov attempted to catch the attention of so-called true scientists but this was futile Nobody wanted to speak with him and Grabenikov writes in chapter 51 of his book that I have only a handful of old clay lumps and fragments of these nests with numerous small room cells. The cells were located side by side and looked like small thimbles or more likely small jugs with smoothly narrowing beaks. There was a wide vessel filled with these spongy clay lumps on his working table, which was jammed with technical instruments, vials with chemical agents and other things, along with ants and grasshopper houses. He says that he brought his hand above these spongy fragments and a miracle happened. He suddenly felt heat from above them, although he touched the lumps by hand and they were cold. He goes on to say that I obviously felt heat above them, 
Moreover, I felt unknown pushes and bounces, like ticks in my fingers. Though Grebenikov was unable to publish the invention's descriptions, he left hints to the readers. By describing the fundamentals of his investigations, because in the 1990s, he wanted to tell the world. And it was only in the 2000s after becoming ill, he began to reduce this information because he thought it could have been a danger to people's health. According to one article, Grebenikov displayed his platform at a museum, the Siberian Research Institute of Agriculture and Chemistry. They say this thing was on display for all to see. Someone somewhere should surely have more photographs of this device that were taken in the museum, no? Perhaps some that were in motion? If this is the case, there must have been eyewitnesses who observed it. Maybe even a large number of them. It's said that there was only one genuine device that was produced. Along with it was one single copy. And just like so many other stories of a similar nature, these things have simply vanished following Grebenikov's death. However, a model of Grebenikov's apparatus did survive in the museum that we spoke about. In fact, only the post remained. The board was stolen, the post was yanked out and all plaster wing nuts were broken. They presumably tried to untwist them. This was only a display model. Everything including the buttons, the toggles and the grips of the handlebar were created through Play-Doh plaster, paper mache and then painted silver. They say that Grebenikov evidently sought to replicate the appearance of this real gadget as accurately as possible. However, in this case, plaster duplicates were created utilizing the original board only. But it's a shame that the lowest portion of this platform, the board itself, was destroyed. Do you think Grebenikov made a groundbreaking discovery? Have you ever seen any pictures or videos of this thing? I find it strange how this seems to be so recent and yet there is so little information to be found on such a groundbreaking technology. Maybe they would rather save the bugs for our future economy. <laughs> Do you think he was completely wrong? Let us know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, it's goodbye from Damage by Design.